Isn't he wonderful this morning? I love the words of that song. Such a sweet presence of the Lord. Because I do believe it. So many times we feel like we lost ourselves. But he knew right where to find us. Amen. He puts us back together. The great defender of your heart. Amen. So powerful, so true, so worthy to be praised this morning. And I thank him and I thank the praise team for ushering us right into the presence of the Lord this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 17. We'll pick up in verse 11. If you don't have your Bibles, we'll have it on the screen for you. I'm going to jump right into it this morning. The Bible says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood, off, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, and he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went... They were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. I come to talk to you this morning and tell you that gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is an attitude. Let's pray this morning. Father, I thank you for your presence in this place today. I thank you that, Lord, you're more than just this building of four walls, but you're in our hearts, God. You're in our souls, God, breathing life into us. And, Lord, I thank you that right now, as there is a continuation of a move of your spirit, use me as you see fit, God, as a willing vessel to speak your word and your truth to your people today. Let our hearts be receptive to your will. Let everything be done to the glory of your name. And we ask and we believe this in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody in the house of the Lord said, Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. I find it fitting on the heels of Thanksgiving that I trust you were blessed, had a good time with family. Maybe you did a little shopping over the last few days. Hopefully that is the case and you had a good time. But this is a time of year that reminds us we should continually give thanks. Amen. But this is particularly a time where we need to give thanks. And when you think about showing or giving thanks, you're really truly talking about gratitude towards others. And I want to lay down a foundation this morning because I truly believe this will teach you some practical truths that maybe you've been stuck in some things for some time. And this will be a word that will free you today if you allow it to resonate in your heart. Because see, gratitude is an attitude. Gratitude is defined as the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. Now, part of the word gratitude, as you can see it there, is attitude. Do you see it? You thought you had a, pa a clever pastor. Well, actually, it's just jumping right out to you there if you look at it. You can't have gratitude without some attitude. So, therefore, gratitude is an attitude. But what is an attitude? Because a lot of times we think of attitudes as being bad. Amen? We always look at attitudes in a negative way. Attitude is defined as a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something, typically one that is reflected in a person's behavior. How often do we celebrate a good attitude? That tells it right there. Many times we see and spend more time correcting or calling out a bad attitude, I would say. And the reason we do is fitting in the definition. It's a settled 
way of thinking or feeling, and it comes out in your behavior. But here in our text, we see an attitude of gratitude that was at work. Amen? We see an attitude of gratitude that was at work. So let's understand this. Let's break this down. If you see in verse 12 through 15, it says, Ten men who were lepers, who stood off afar. Ten men who were leopards. All ten had the same condition. All ten had the same issue. You could call leprosy at that time the horrible C word of our time, cancer. It could be a, a death sentence that would be spoken. If you had leprosy, you were in trouble. There was no cure. Now, the only way that you would know that you had been cleansed, you had to go see the priest, and that's why Jesus sent them on their way. He told them to go. But I want you to notice that all ten of them had the same condition. All ten of them had the same issue. All ten of them received the same thing as well. Because, see, it says, when he saw that he was healed, the one returned with a loud voice to glorify God. And I find it funny that only one out of ten would go back and show a little gratitude. But, see, as you see here in our lives, we feel that we only give thanks based on the conditions of what we experience. We only give thanks based on what we experience, so if our experience is poor, we're not going to give any gratitude for a poor experience, are we? You may have gone through some things in your life and had some issues going on that you didn't give thanks for. And you think, well, that just is totally contradicting. Well, but think about it for a second. If you're going to allow every little condition to dictate your experience, then you are in trouble. You need to learn how to dictate your conditions and not let them dictate you. Hello. See, only one out of ten, only one, all ten received the same healing, but one came to give thanks. And I'm here to tell you this morning that gratitude is a choice, not a condition. Did you hear me? Gratitude and having an attitude of gratitude is a choice, not a condition. The Bible tells us. It just showed us. Because if a condition was the reason for you to give gratitude, then one of them wouldn't have turned around and come back. They all had the same issue. Did you see it this morning? They all had the exact same issue. But we want to allow a condition to dictate what we would give thanks for. What we would be grateful for. And if we have a poor experience, then we don't give out any thanks. Do we? No. Because we choose not to. Gratitude is a choice. It's not a condition. The Bible clearly shows us they all had the same issue. But one had a different response. Why? Because he chose to. He chose to turn around. He chose to give thanks. In the midst of the issue, he chose to give thanks. Because, see, he had the same problem that they had. And he received the same healing that they did. But he chose to show gratitude and show a right attitude. And he was the least one who would have done it. And we'll get to that. But I want to tell you this morning that your gratitude is not based on your conditions, but it's a choice. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalms chapter 9. It said, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell you, or I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Did you notice what the psalmist was saying? I, I will, I will, I will, I will. And God's looking for you to stop looking at your situations and say, you know what, I'm going to choose to praise you no matter what. I will glorify you in the midst of my struggle. I will glorify you and honor you with my praise. I will choose an attitude of gratitude and thank you no matter what comes my way because I am going to, because I choose to this day to be thankful in all of my circumstances. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. I'm not going to let someone or something make my choices for me this morning. You need to get that in your heart right now. Because, see, I feel a wall that I'm trying to kick down, and all it is is the barrier of your breakthrough. Because this morning, this is a breakthrough word. No, it may not be a shouting message, but it's one that if you will get the practical truths in your heart to say, I will choose to praise you no matter what comes my way, you will get that in your spirit, and you will feel it in a way, and that no matter how you are feeling in the moment, you will 
articulate and express it because you chose to. You have a choice. You have a choice, child of God. And let me tell you something. Just as Jesus was saying, he said, he answered and said to them, I'll tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. You know what they would cry out? Praise. I'm here to tell you this morning, ain't no rock going to take my shout. I've got too much to be thankful for. And this time of year, you need to reflect back maybe on 2018, 2017, 2016 of some things that maybe you didn't praise him for, that he brought you through because you chose not to praise him because in the middle of the struggle, you thought it was horrible. But right now, you should reflect back and see that it was a blessing preparing you for the moment that you're living in right now. See, you've got to learn to choose to give him a shout of praise, whether you feel like it or not, just because you chose to. You chose to come to church this morning. You might as well as choose to give him some praise up in his house this morning because he's worthy of it. Ain't no rock going to take my praise. They're not going to cry out for me. No, I'm going to give him praise for what he did for me. You've got to get an attitude of gratitude and I heard somebody say at one time that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. They must have read the Bible because only 1 out of 10 came back to give thanks. That's 10%. That means the other 90% went on. Your life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond. You want to know why? Because the the 90% of your response is what you spend more time dwelling on or more time cleaning up. Hello. Hello. Yeah, the way you respond to what happens in your life, the way and the actions you take, that's what you put your effort towards, not what happened. But we want to build up the 10% to be more. We want to build it up to be a case that it's far greater than it's truly worthy of being. It's only 10%. 10 leopards, one return. 10% had an attitude of gratitude. 10%. 10%. How you respond to something will truly matter. You can get a bad report and you can choose to accept it and believe it and go bury yourself in it. Or you can listen to it and then you start talking to it and you tell it what it's going to be, how it's going to be. And when you do, child of God, you will get that favor all over your life to a place and a point where it doesn't matter what comes through the doors you're ready to handle it because you've got the right response in you. And you say, well, there's no way. Yeah, there's no way. Well, let me tell you something. Attitudes can be changed. And I'm here to change some attitudes this morning. See, in verse 15 and 16, it says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God, fell down on his face and at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now note, the text calls this out, and it's important for us to understand the context of why he was called out as a Samaritan. If you go back and you look, the Jews and the Samaritans, they had a split. It was like a house divided. They did not associate. You did not do anything if you were a Samaritan with the Jew. So therefore, why would a Samaritan go back and praise Jesus? Why? Wouldn't have. He was the least likely Of the ten, he was the one singled out who not only returned, but was labeled as a Samaritan. He was the one who was not supposed to turn around. He was the one that was not to have that type of gratification and thanks for a Jew. That was not in them. That was not how they were raised. That was not what they were taught. That is not what was acceptable in that time. But I'm here to tell you that attitudes can change because of what Jesus did in his life. When you have a life-altering change, you can't help but see the change and give glory to God for it. But that change only comes through one person. So you got to choose to receive him, but when you receive him, the change comes right along with it. And that's the change that you got to give him praise for because he can change your attitude and the way you felt. Let me get this for you this morning because I feel like sometimes as we look at the definition of what it means to have an attitude is, is a place of settling. And I think sometimes that someone sitting here today, you could be settling in a place of, I am always going to be this way. I will always deal with things this way. Somebody may think, well, I was just born this way, or I was taught this way. 
But see, you got to see through all of that and understand that you're not who you used to be. You're not who you were raised because when you received Christ in your heart, you were born again, child of God, which means all things are made new, which means that you have to understand the change that comes into your life through that. See, he said, I make all things new. I make all things new. And in this time of year, it's really hard because holidays always bring up the hurts the most. Always. It never fails. Holidays in this time of year usually brings up the biggest pains because around the holidays, you experience way more stresses that we put on ourselves. Amen? I look, I work in customer service and I manage a team and I always tell them I was laying this foundation down weeks ago. Be ready. Be ready. What do we got to be ready for? All the promotions. No, 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 no. You need to be ready for the customers that are on 10, on 11, on 12, because of how stressed they are. What? Yes. Some of you probably experienced that this weekend. You said, wait a minute, but it's Thanksgiving. Okay, let's be real for a moment. Can I teach you for a minute? Let me, let me open up your mind to something. When you're at the holiday tables, sometimes you have hurts from families, from your past, that all those issues and feelings come up when you're sitting around that table, don't they? Everybody's got that cousin, mother, father-in-law, somebody who gets on their nerves or has hurt them in their past, and you ain't let it go. And you allow that to dictate your experience, and it puts you in a stressful place or in a stressful kind of way. Or you're just mad because you got to wait in line for two hours to get that 50% off deal. I don't know. Is it worth it? I'll be honest. I went to a store and said, man, if i got to wait in this line, it better be worth it. Is that worth it? Because we, we are not waiting in line for, for that kind of a discount. Come on. But it's stressful. You lack of sleep. You're spending more money than you usually do. And then you got to sit around and visit with people who have hurt you in your past that you haven't extended them forgiveness for. And you say, you know what? I'm that way. I'm always that way around the holidays. Can I tell you about my experience? Would that be okay? Would that be all right? Because see, the holidays for me were, I'm putting it in its context, were that way. I grew up in a divided home, so every holiday for me was division. It was hard to have an attitude of gratitude growing up for me in a house that was divided because it was, who am I going to on this holiday and where am I going on this holiday and it was never any fun and did you know that those things took root in my life that it took me a long time to finally deal with it but I did because she is then when I got older and I got married and I had kids guess what I brought all that issue with me that feeling of a divided holiday stayed with me and somebody here this morning I bet you have been in the same place and I hope that this is freeing for you because, see, the holidays for me were a stressful time and a time of division, and I didn't quite, quite much like it. So guess who I was? Bah humbug. Right here. Yeah, this guy. Bah humbug. I didn't want the matching pajamas. I didn't want to play the games. I certainly didn't want to spend the money. Hello. But you know what I found out was? And this is the life-altering truth that many of you should understand and know, that your attitude not only impacts you, but others around you. And so I had to learn that, you know what? I'm not living in what was. I'm living in the now. Attitudes can change. So guess what I do now? I make reindeer food. <laughs> Y'all want to know about some reindeer food? Just ask me or my wife after service. It is a blessing, and it is fun. Oh, and the pajamas, they're a blast if you just embrace it. I went and bought my abominable snowman uh, pants this week. I was stoked, y'all. I was excited. I was like, oh, yeah. Hey, we've been playing Christmas music in the car for like a month. I ain't lost my mind yet. Come on. But you know what? We laugh, but in the past... I'd have been mad. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But attitudes can change. Because attitudes 
are a choice. You have a choice to make. You have a choice to choose how you respond. Remember what I told you? Life is 10% of what happens to you. 90% of it is how you respond. If you don't like the condition you're in, then change the way you respond. Attitudes can change. Gratitude can come when you're being thankful. And I'm here to tell you this morning that Jesus was questioning and he said, was there not 10 that were cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Jesus was saying, well, I did more than this. And I want to ask you a question this morning. Because, see, sometimes I think we have the nine experience more than the one. We have the nine experience more than the one because we choose to walk away. Yeah, see, I'm here to ask you this morning, how about the little things he does to bless you every day? Do you choose to see them, or are you like the nine and walk away? Do you only celebrate him for the 10% wins versus the 90% wins? Because in this life, you win in the end, which means you are victorious over everything. Now, see, we only want to celebrate and shout over the 10. Amen? We, we shouted... No offense, we shouted for the 10% that happened, right? But I guarantee you they were shouting and praising over the 90%, which was every day getting to that 10% day, amen? And it's getting in an attitude of gratitude where you say that, you know what, God, I'm facing this big 10%, but the 90% of the way I'm going to respond is one where I'm going to praise you, I'm going to choose to honor you, I'm going to choose to glorify you, because until I get my 90% praise, I can't receive my full, complete blessing. Because you can't get 100% with 90, and you certainly can't get 100% with 10. you got to have them all together. So you might as well as just praise him no matter what comes. You get a bad report, praise God. I'm going to trust him for my healing. you got something going on that you didn't think you should be dealing with, praise God for it. Because it's going to give you the faith to be able to determine what you do in the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Because guess what? Every time another obstacle comes and you have an attitude of gratitude, you'll just thank him for it anyways. So you might as well thank him from the start instead of thanking him in the end. Come on, somebody. That's what it means to have an attitude of gratitude. That means that no matter what comes your way, you're going to thank him for it from day one. And I promise you, when you look at your situation in a way in which you are gratifying him and glorifying him, even when you don't want to, it will change the way you see it. Because the way you responded was different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I need to tell you this morning, because see, some of us get stuck in a way because we choose to. <laughs> we'll sit there and say, I hate where I'm at right now. I hate it. You'll say that. I cannot stand where I'm at right now. If you don't like it, choose a different way. Because see, I find it funny that so many times we choose the attitude that we hate the most, and it keeps us there. Let me say that again. See, we, we choose the attitude that we hate the most, and it keeps us where we don't want to be, so all you got to do is change your attitude. you got to change the way you look at it. you got to change the way you feel about it. you got to change the way that you experience it. Because when you sit there and tell somebody, I can't believe that it's this way, and I hate it being this way, well, you chose it that way, and you can choose to get out of it. Just like you choose to get out of bed in the morning. Just like you choose to brush your teeth or not brush your teeth. And I sure hope you all brush your teeth today. And so does your neighbor. But gratitude is being thankful. And I want you to see something because, see, faith is directly related to thankfulness. Note this. The Samaritan came back and he says, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? You know what he said to the foreigner? He said, and he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. If you have faith in something, you believe in it. Therefore, you are no longer a foreigner. 
God didn't take away the healing of the other nine, did he? No, God won't do that. But you know what the nine missed out on? The nine got the physical healing. The one who returned got the physical healing and the spiritual healing. Said that he was made well. He was more than healed. He was made well. Why? Because he came back and he gave thanks in faith. Hebrews 13 15 and 16 says, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Then he defines it. That is the fruit of our lips giving what? Thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. To have an attitude of gratitude, you have to choose that no matter what may come. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. In everything give for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything. That means in the midst of a struggle, in the midst of a victory, you need to be given thanks. In everything, you give thanks. In everything, you give thanks. Not just when it's good, but you always choose to give thanks. Ephesians 5 and 18. Giving thanks always for what? All things. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come play me some Stop in music. You can have an attitude of gratitude, but you have to choose to. You have to choose it. I knew coming in today this wasn't going to be fun. Let's be clear. I knew my assignment today was not fun. But it's one that if you let this word get in your heart and get in your mind, it will change your life. But you know what else it'll do? It'll change everything around you as well. Because, see, it's kind of like this. You all laughed because I said I was bah humbug because I really was. You can ask my wife. It's no shame. I really was. But it's kind of like this because maybe you can't relate to that. You ever been at a fast food place and somebody bought your meal in front of you? Has that ever happened? A few people said, yeah. What did you immediately want to do? Buy the person behind you, right? Right? It started with somebody choosing to have an attitude of gratitude and they said, you know what, I want to bless the person behind me. And then guess what happens? Then you bless the person behind you and then you bless the person behind you and then maybe it finally stops because why? Somebody chose not to. That's why attitude is a choice. You can choose to have an attitude of gratitude. You choose it. Or it's kind of like this. I had this visual in my mind. You think of all this rushing traffic, and you think of like w traffic flowing, right? And this is us. We go through our lives. We're on that freeway. We're on that highway, and traffic is just flowing. But there's people who need to get in on the on-ramp because they want to get into that flow. But you know why they can't get there and everything backs up on, off the side of the freeway? Because nobody will allow them in. That's how when you choose to have an attitude of gratitude and let somebody go or extend favor, guess what then that happens? That starts to flow. Because then the car behind you sees you let somebody in. They say, you know what, I probably need to let somebody else in too. And that's what I mean when I'm telling you this morning. You choose your attitude. You, you choose to bless others. You choose in every situation. And to extend gratitude, it's an attitude. And I think so many times we settle for the wrong things. We settle in the what was. We settle in the what we've always known to be because we're afraid of what's on the other side. But on the other side is freedom. On the other side is blessing. On the other side is joy. On the other side is peace. It's kind of like what it said in Jeremiah 17. He said, heal me, Lord. And guess what? And I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. And they keep saying to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it be fulfilled now. 
Let it now be fulfilled. We need some now moments. Right now, stand up on your feet. There's a now moment for somebody here today. It's been a burden. It's been a struggle and a fight. But we're in that now moment where you get to make a choice. Well, I choose to allow the things of my past to dictate my present? Or will I choose an attitude of gratitude and give God praise as if he's already done it? Will I allow things to hold me back? Or am I going to choose to go ahead and just break through with some praise and thanksgiving because I choose to? Or you can just allow everything else to surround you and dictate your experience. I'm a firm believer that when you're a child of God, you have the same glory and power that he's extended to you that he can supply to meet each and every need. And the problem is we won't choose it enough. We'll allow too many other things to influence us. So this morning, it's your now moment. Now is your time to move. Now is your time to receive. Because see... Just like the leper that was cleansed, see all nine, all ten of them got cleansed, but the one who came to give thanks was made completely well. So whatever you're needing this morning, come receive the fullness of what God has for you. Don't be like the nine today and walk away just getting the surface level, but get the spiritual deep level that only he can provide for you because you returned and gave him thanks today so as they sing it's your time to move child of God it's your time to move come out of sadness from wherever you go come broken hearted let a rescue begin come Oh, sinner, come here. Earth has no sorrow, but heaven can't Earth has no sorrow, but heaven can't So they 